Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. I just got in all these beautiful fat quarter bundles from K Facet. So we're gonna go into the workshop and make a quilt. Now we don't get these prints in quite as often as we get a lot of our other fabrics in. But every time we do, I'm reminded of how much fun these are to stitch with. Kate Facet is a fabric designer, and you can always recognize his prints. He has a very distinctive style. The prints are brilliant colors and bold, big, fun, happy designs. Now, when I sew with these prints, I don't always, but I usually try to pick a pattern that has some bigger pieces in it so that we can get the full impact of these beautiful designs. So the one I've chosen is called Upstream from Cozy Quilt Designs. And I think the size of the pieces here will be just perfect for all of these fabrics. Now I've got five different fat quarter bundles here. Any of them would look just lovely in this pattern, but I haven't made anything blue and green in a while. So I think I'll use this one. Now, one of the things I like the best about Cozy Quilt's patterns is they come with multiple sizes. So this one actually has five different sizes, and I'm gonna make the throw size today. So we're going to need 12 fat quarters. Now my bundle has 20, so I'm gonna pick out the 12 that I like, put the others aside for another project. Then we're going to need three quarters of a yard of an accent, and this green batik will look really good. Okay, these are the 12 fat quarters I've selected. The first step is to open them up and give them a nice steam press so that they are completely flat. Okay, everything is all ironed nice and flat and I'm ready to sub cut all the fat quarters. They all get cut exactly the same and I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern, but I've made so many Cozy Quilt design patterns and they're very easy to follow. Now I'm gonna cut six of the fat quarters at a time because that's how many layers of fabric I'm comfortable cutting. You can cut as many as you are comfortable. You may wanna only do four, maybe you wanna do eight. There's all the fat quarter pieces. Now let's cut some accent. Okay, that is all the sub cuts. Our next step is to use this template that's included in the pattern to cut off two corners off the small rectangles and all four corners off of the large rectangles. We're going to cut this out right along the lines and then I'm going to tape it onto my big acrylic ruler. Now I'm going to line up the long edge of the triangle on a clear plastic ruler and I'm going to take a couple pieces of tape. Clear tape works the best and I'll be able to get this off when I'm done but I just need to tape it in place because we can now put this on the top of the fabric so that the corners of the template are lined up with the edges here. That's why the clear tape helps. And then we're going to cut off this corner. And then I'm going to turn it and cut off this corner. Now on the large rectangles here, we need to cut off all four corners. So line it up carefully and take that little bit off of all four corners. 
So go ahead and do that with all of your big and little pieces. Now I'm taking my small fat quarter pieces and my accent triangles over to the sewing machine. So these are actually replacement corners for the corners we cut off here. So let's take one of these and we're gonna put the long edges of the triangle on this long edge here. And we're going to center it up on that edge. And I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch from the edge. Now, when I press this open, it's gonna smash it a little because it's a bias edge here and it will stretch if I'm if I pull it. So I'm just gonna smash a little. But see how this made one long piece there? One long edge? Now we're gonna take a second triangle and it goes right here. So I'm just eyeballing this to center it up on the edge there. I'm making sure I've got about the same amount here as I've got here so that when I stitch with that quarter inch seam, everything will fit. So you might have to practice a couple, but it's, it's not difficult. So see how I stitched right to where those two meet? And then I'm going to finger press this one open. And now we've got a nice rectangle that's the same, the same shape as this was before we cut off those corners. So it's a very handy way of getting corners onto a rectangle. Now we're gonna give this a quick pressing here. And then just trim off all these little extra pieces. They're called dog ears. So I just use my scissors, trim that, that, and that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these corners onto all of my small rectangle pieces. Once those are all done, we're going to work with the large rectangles. And we're gonna use exactly the same procedure to put these corner triangles on. The only difference is now we have to put them on one end and onto the other end. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those all stitched up real quick. Now that I have all the big ones done, I've got the little ones, I'm taking them all back to the sewing machine. And we have all that we need to make the block that's going to make up the whole quilt. We need two of these and one of these. So the first step is to sew these two together. So I'm gonna put them right sides together and I wanna make sure that the points on these are gonna match. So here's an easy way to do it. I'm gonna stick my pin right through there. It's right through the point and then I'm gonna stick the pin right at the tip of that point and press those down. Now you can put the pin all the way through if you like. You just wanna carry this over to your machine here. And I'm just leaving that pin sticking in there. Take a couple stitches and then I'm gonna hold the pin and just slide everything down. And now I know they are matching right there. Now I can move that pin out of the way and stitch right along here. And let's see how close we got here. Pretty close. This one could be a little more pointy. This has got a nice point on it. And I will get better with those points as I go. So I'm gonna finger press the seam to one side. It doesn't matter which side. Now this is going to get stitched onto here. So they're exactly the same length now. There's nothing to match now. So we'll just start at the top. Stitch all the way down. And I'm going to finger press this seam towards the bigger rectangle here. And I just picked three different fabrics. It doesn't matter which ones you pick. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up all the rest of my pieces into this block. The blocks are all done and we're ready to lay out the quilt. Now you can see I've got them in two stacks here. They're all the same block. But I found when I was ironing that instead of ironing all the seam allowances towards this big piece, I did half towards this way and half the other way. And that way, when these come together, they'll be able to nest and it'll be very easy to sew the quilt together. So all I'm gonna do is put one of these blocks and then one of these blocks. They're the same block 
put the seam allowances with them going in opposite directions, it'll make it really easy when the rows come together. Now every block is laid out exactly the same. Big piece on the left, two smaller pieces on the right. So once I get the whole quilt laid out, then I'm going to go around and I'm going to go around and trade some of the blocks so we don't end up with the same print right next to itself. Now that all the blocks are on the table, you can see why I want to trade some around. This fabric, it all ended up in this one corner, so I'm going to want to make sure some is up over there or over there. Also, I've got these two meeting, so it's real easy to fix this. I'm just going to take this one here, that one there, and trade it. And then I'll take maybe this one here and this one up here and trade. And I'll just keep moving it around till it looks very balanced. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with the balance of colors now. The next step is to sew everything in rows. So we'll sew this row together and these seams here, we will press all to the right. Then we'll sew the second row together and these seams will all go to the left, then it will be very easy to get the quilt finished. All we have to do after that is add a couple of borders. We can get it on to the quilting machine. I've got the quilt all done and I'm heading down to the shipping department because I have a lot of fabric there and I want to pick out a border. I'm sure I'm going to want to use another K facet print for the outside border, and I've got some over here. I certainly want to use something that's blue or green, maybe purple. Um, okay, this one would be perfect. It's got a nice blue, a lot of contrast, almost solid, not too many wild colors in it. We're going to have a little border of that. That one will be perfect. Now that the quilt is on the machine, we need to pick out a thread color. There are lots of colors that would look good here. And I don't think any of them are really going to show. So we've got kind of a medium blue, and this is going to blend in everywhere, except it might show a little bit on that light green there. Here's a lighter blue. Now this might show on the border a little bit, not much on the green at all. We could use a purple. It's going to show a little in the green, but not much in the patchwork. I think this one is a little bit too turquoise. Wouldn't be bad. Green. This is a darker green than what I've got. And that will show in the light, not much in the dark. But I really think that this one will blend in the best. And that's what I want here. I want it to recede into the patchwork. So we'll go with this medium blue. For the quilting pattern, I've picked something kind of fun. This is called Scribble, and it doesn't work on a lot of patterns because it's kind of abstract, but it looks really good on the K-Facet prints. It's nice and even and curvy. It'll be perfect for this quilt. The upstream quilt is all done. I really am happy with how it turned out. The border, that dark border, seemed to really finish it off nicely. I like the patchwork a lot better now that the border is on. Now this is the throw size, 62 by 70, 
And this is one of those patterns that looks good in any size. You can't see the quilting very much, which is what I wanted. It's just kind of these abstract scribbles. Now on the back side, we can see it because I used blue thread on that light green um, batik, and that looks very nice from that side as well. One interesting thing I did was to use the same color for the binding as I've got in the accent and on this border here. And I like the effect here because it seems to pull that color out of the quilt, and that looks really good. Now, this is a very, very fast quilt to make. I was quite surprised at how quickly it stitched up. And that's probably because these pieces are big, which is what I wanted with these large scale K facet prints. But you'll notice the pattern here. These are all batiks and they're small prints or fabrics that have almost no print. And it looks really good in that also. Thanks to everyone for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now, we're going to have a quilt giveaway. This is one called Darts. We made this in a video several months ago. It has nice bright colors. They're Robert Kaufman prints and it's very easy to enter the giveaway. All you have to do is click the link that's right below this video and it says giveaway. That'll take you to our website and you can enter your name and your email address. And remember, we can send this to anybody anywhere in the world, so good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel because that really helps us out. Happy quilting.